I'm trying to find out how cannabis is supplied to people like Joe and Nathan. So far, I've met a dealer and a farmer. But I want to speak to someone linked with those earning the seven-figure sums at the very top of the weed business. OK, I'm here right now, actually on the white cliffs of Dover to meet Jason Wilson. His father was a, a cannabis smuggler for years. He used ports throughout the UK to smuggle it into. Well, it wasn't until the law finally caught up with him. Jason's dad is Anthony Spencer, who is the head of an organised crime group and is currently in prison for cannabis smuggling. Jason has since written a series of cartoon novels about his dad's experiences. I'm curious to find out where cannabis comes from and how it's smuggled into the country without being detected by the UK border agency who police the borders. So if you're going to smuggle a large quantity of cannabis into, into a port in the UK, would it be on a vessel like that? Yeah, just like that. Because that, that to me looks like, you know, a ferry that you might hop onto France and back in. Is that a passenger ferry? Yeah, just a regular ferry. It uh, brings in lorries, coaches, booze cruisers, people in cars just going for the weekend. Um, might be on that ferry, for instance. There's a lorry there and it's got a consignment on board now. <laughs> lorry driver's just doing his normal job. Just happens this time, he's got a consignment on board and when he gets into the UK, he's going to get paid very well for that. There are many smuggling routes into the UK from Holland, Afghanistan, Pakistan and the Caribbean. But I want to know which one Jason's dad used. The source is the mountains of Morocco and the farmers. And that's the start of the process? That's the start of the process. You'll either be dealing with the farmers or you'll be dealing with the, the so-called Moroccan Mafia. Um, they'll have connections with the, with the Brit. Uh, in my father's case, obviously him, he was the head guy of that little operation. Yeah. Once you've got your source and good people, you bring it over by boat. Uh, moonless night, little rib boats, very fast. You have a little team down in the south of Spain on the bay. They bring it in, they pack it, get ready for the transport and then it simply comes in a lorry. They'll drive it all the way up to Calais for you. And once it's at Calais, it should be straightforward. It comes straight through at Dover at the other end and then off into the UK where it goes to another safe house where the parcel is broken up and at that point it just gets distributed all over the UK. And within days, the money starts coming in. And the money goes back to Morocco and the whole chain begins again. Simple as that. Simple as that, really. This is a real involved organisation. This is organised crime, really, isn't it? This yeah, is it's organised. That's what they call it. Yeah. It is organised. If it was disorganised, it wouldn't last long. Yeah, so right. It's got, yeah, it's got to be organised, and it's run like most businesses are, but you haven't got the paperwork. <laughs> as simple as that, the system you work in. So was your dad the guy at the top, would you say? He or? was considered to be the top guy who controlled it from Spain into England. Uh, he was convicted in Spain. Uh, that was bringing it in from Morocco, and that was like a, a ton and a half of hashish, I think. He's out next year, and I think he's planning on to be retired now. Wow. I mean, how much would, would he be, if you don't mind me asking, how much would he be earning from, from smuggling? I mean, in Morocco, if you're buying it, say you're buying it like 100 a key, and you're selling it to, to like a, a grand a key here, that's wholesale, so it kind of gets sold. But you're, still, you're making a hell of a lot of money. So you're um, 100 pounds a key, yeah. and you're selling it for 1,000 Yeah, once a key. you get it here. I mean, there's a lot of profit. You've got things to pay out on the way, yeah. and you can pay people well, but... Um, while that's going well, you're doing brilliantly. Yeah. Because mm. at some point, something will, will go wrong, guaranteed. It's like uh, it's just like gambling on roulette. Yeah. You know, you go red, 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 but at some point, it, things just go wrong. Do you think the UK Borders HC are, are doing a good job in deterring smugglers? Well, evidently not. Um, there's only so much they can do. They can't physically go through everything. You can't scan lorries the way they would like you to think they can. It's it's quite simple. It's just a, just a needle in a haystack, really. That's what they're looking for. The UK border agency face a massive challenge policing Britain's 600 ports and stopping cannabis being smuggled in. Smugglers use all kinds of clever ways to sneak cannabis into the UK without being detected. <laughs> 